السلام عليكم Maybe you can dim the lights just a little bit more so it's clear. I'm going to be talking to you today about how to create 600,000 jobs in Afghanistan in only six months. When people think of Afghanistan and you ask them, what's the biggest challenge? What's the biggest problem? Most people will say, security. And after 40 years of war, finally people have now realized that a military solution is not possible. A political solution is currently under discussion. We'll see how that goes. But there's another solution that people have not thought about as much as I would like, and that's an economic solution. Because if you take a map of Afghanistan and you try to see where there's insecurity, you'll find that it matches with joblessness and with unemployed. Now, some people will say that, well, first you need security, and then that's why the jobs are coming to those places. But I'd like to argue something else. I would like to say that actually, Jobs bring security, not the other way around. Because it's a fact that people with jobs are much less likely to join the insurgency. And unfortunately, right now, we have about 40% of the Afghan population that are jobless and are looking for work. Um, so you can imagine what the security situation is like because of that. And then this situation is only getting worse every year. A further 400,000 Afghans every year are joining the workforce, and they're having trouble finding jobs. So, the big multi-million dollar question, how do we employ not only these 400,000 Afghans that are joining the workforce every year, but an existing uh, unemployed force? So we need at least 600,000 uh, Afghans to join. How do we do it? So you can think about um, sectors. What areas could potentially uh, we target to, to create jobs? There's, of course, manufacturing, but it's very hard to compete with China in manufacturing, right? There's IT. Um, we can do IT services locally, but in terms of as an export, as a country, it's very difficult to compete with India in the IT sector. There's agriculture, and yes, we can provide agriculture for the country, and it represents a large percentage of our uh, income, but to compete on a global scale in agriculture is going to be very difficult. Mining, people have mentioned, yes, $3 trillion of potential resources we have, uh, and it has a bright future, but we have to face the facts that for a large number of mining jobs, it's going to take a long time, many, many years, to build that infrastructure. So what's left? Local goods and services. We still have 36 million population. They need goods and they need services. And how do we provide that? How do we encourage and promote uh, an economy within the country and encourage that to go about? So there are three things. There's assets that are underutilized. There are goods that we need to get to market. And there's services that we need to get to market. We need to build a local economy that can grow and promote and keep uh, being a cycle that will continuously expand. So I'm going to be talking about these three things today. Assets, goods, and services. How do we um, uh, encourage the local economy? How do we encourage uh, people to transact more? And that will result in, in the jobs that we're looking for. But how do we connect them? If we're trying to connect buyers and sellers, we need to find a mechanism, a platform to connect them. These 36 million people in Afghanistan, uh, about 78% of them have mobile phones. 26% of them have access to the internet. And about 10 million are active social media users. Now, not only that, but this is expanding dramatically. Um, not only is the population expanding, we have one of the youngest populations in the world at 2.3% growth every year. Um, mobile subscriptions are also increasing. But most importantly is internet usage. Year on year, almost 150% were expanding access to internet. So more and more people are being connected through internet uh, in Afghanistan. Now, we have uh, a need for um, connecting people. But we need to tell them how to do that. We have access to internet. What do you do with it? How can you access it? One of the ways is through apps. Now, we would need a nationwide campaign to explain to people how to use their phones to download certain apps to give them access to be able to advertise their own talents, to be able to advertise the goods they have for sale, and for buyers to be able to find them. So that's the, the, the platform that we need to, uh, to look at, both on the uh, supply side for goods and services to be able to list their app, as well as on the demand side for users, for you to be able to uh, request those goods and services. Now, number one, assets. There's about 700,000 unused vehicles in Afghanistan 
unused or underutilized is what I can do. 700,000. That means that you know, people generally use vehicles to drive to work in the morning, then they're at home or at work all day long, and then they drive back home at the end of the day. All day long, their car is not being used, just sitting there, standing still. All night long, it's not being used. So they have this asset, an expensive asset, that they're not taking advantage of, right? They're not putting it to good use. And what we can do is uh, have a mechanism, a platform, for people to be able to put that asset that they have to use. Have their friends or family, for example, um, use that car to generate a livelihood and an income for themselves. So this is an example of putting an asset to use. But not only that, you can convince people not to buy cars in the first place because then they don't have to worry about fuel, about maintenance, about parking, about the car getting uh, lost or damaged or stolen because if there's a service that they can instantly request transportation anywhere in the country, go anywhere and not worry about anything, that's one way to do it. So here's another way to kind of explain um, how that does it. اگر برای گرفتن تاکسی همیشه دچار مشکل می شوید می توانید رای بهتر را انتخاب کنید برنامه موبایل با بر را کاملا رایگان دانلود کنید و به طور آنلاین درخواست تاکسی نمایید با بر موتر بگیرید و محفوظ بمانید So that's how we get assets utilized so I said there were three things. That was the first one. The second one, people need goods, right? In their homes, in their offices, in camps, all across the country, they need to purchase goods. And in the, in the current model, when you have these five million households uh, in Afghanistan, they are uh, required to go and walk into a shop. And the shopkeeper is limited to the customers that walk into the door, right? That's, that's all of his customers, whoever walks into the door of his shop. But if there's a way that he can reach the entire country, those entire 36 million people. So he can say, hey, I have these goods for sale. So you don't have to get in the car, drive, argue, negotiate, put it, go back home. Uh, you'd be able to access a much bigger market and it'd be a much easier facility for other people. When people do that, um, however, there's a number of niche areas that come into play. Um, in neighboring countries, for example, uh, female hygiene products were an area that boomed very quickly online because women were uncomfortable going to the market to buy these things in, in male-dominated stores, but very carefully from this, you know, convenience of their own home, they could order whatever they needed, and it would be delivered to their home in a discreet package uh, instantly. Or mothers ordering diapers, or whatever it might be. There's so many options there that will make it easier for other people and allow people that have goods to offer to reach the entire population, not just waiting for people to come into their door. So, we talked about assets, now we talked about goods. But the question is payment. So not only through, uh, you don't have to worry about even cash. You can get things done much faster by sending payment instantly. So the person doesn't have to worry, when I bring something expensive to the house, am I gonna get it paid or not? What the price is gonna be later on? You're going to know right from the beginning if you want to buy it, and you can make that payment right there into a wallet. And we'll talk more about that wallet and how important that is for the local economy. Number three. So assets, goods. Now we're going to talk about services. All right? Services is, uh, is the largest area, right? Because we have about 13 million literate workers in Afghanistan. Right? We have plumbers, we have carpenters, we have electricians, we have laborers, and we also have unskilled laborers. We have beauticians. They're uh, all these people that have certain skills that they want to go to market. But there's not a platform, a way to do it. If your pipe breaks in your bathroom, right, how do you know how to trust a good plumber? But if you have all the local plumbers being able to list that these are my services, I would like to advertise it, you can call one up right away to fix the issue that you have at hand, pay them, uh, right away. Of course, they'll be uh, picked up and dropped off by, by Bubar, so they don't have to worry about transportation to where they're going. And also, um, you can rate them to say, hey, this plumber did a great job, this electrician did a great job, this beautician really knows what she's doing. And other users will be able to see, rank, and take advantage of that knowledge to be able to pick um, the best uh, service providers out there. So with this method, over 300,000 workers we can uh, put to use across the country. In this example, a plumber was requested. 
Um, but again, it's not just about paying your contractors and paying your vendors and goods. You can pay anyone. You can send money to your friends and family. You can send money from abroad to Afghanistan. Instead of money going out of Afghanistan, we could have ways to bring it into the, uh, the country and have it utilized and circulated within the country itself. So instead of people wasting their time waiting in lines at the bank to pay their bill or pick up their salary or transfer some money to somebody else, they can do it all instantaneously. What does that mean? That means they have more time to be productive members of society and work and not wasting time on administrative items. So we talked about three things. What does that mean? We want recirculation within the country. We want people to be able to um, receive funds to their uh, mobile wallets and then they're much more likely to be able to use that funds locally in Afghanistan because now that I have money received through my salary, we're requesting all bank uh, payments to go through there. We're requesting all government employees to get their salary uh, electronically. We're requesting all foreigners and donors to pay through electronically. Once you have your money on your phone, you'd be much more willing to use that money to pay a provider that would accept that instead of worrying about going to the ATM or going to the bank to, uh, to cash out. You'd be much more, more willing to pay your bills online. So the vendors that are registered, they have an advantage. They have an advantage because they already can receive that, and everyone else that has money on that can use it as well. Thank you.